Now that we have the product rule, let's look at the other operations on square root. We start with addition, subtraction, and division. For addition and subtraction, our main tool is the distributive rule, but we're going to go backwards as factoring. So the idea is we just combine the like terms and then collect whatever is left over. For instance, if I have A, B, and A, C, they have an A in common, so I can pull that out, and then what will be left over, we'll have a B left over and a C left over, they go in the parentheses. So this is just the distributive rule. For instance, okay, if I take 3 squared to 2 plus 4 squared to 2, if they have this is 3 oranges plus 4 oranges, we get 7 oranges. But to do it formally, we know we've got a square root of 2 in common to both terms. So we pull that out. What's left over is a 3 plus 4. Note, if I start with two terms, I should have two terms in the parentheses. And then we're going to wind up with, we just add, and we get 7 square roots of 2. For a common error, let's take a look at the next example. Okay, if I have 6 cube roots of 3 minus 2 cube root of 3, plus a cube root of 3. Here I've got three terms, so when I factor out the cube root of 3, I better have three terms in the parentheses. Okay, and the common error is going to be the drop the 1 here. So there's no 1 here, but when we factor it out, i got to get a 1. If you're not sure, just check your work by distributing, and if you drop the, the 1, you won't get this cube root of 3 back. So we need to be careful with that. We simplify, so I add all this up, and then that's going to just give us 5 cube roots of 3. A problem with addition and subtraction, things that don't match may match after you simplify. So that's going to be a first step whenever we do operations of square roots. For instance, if I take 6 square root of 50 plus 3 square root of 32, Square roots do not match here. You might want to walk away, but first you should take another look. If we look at the biggest squares under each radical, okay, so for the first one we've got a 50, uh, 25 coming from the 50. Second one we've got a 16. 25 goes to 5, 16 goes to 4, leaving us with square root of 2 in each term. So this is actually, we can do some work here. So I'll get a 42 square root of 2. Note, two terms, two terms, and then our answer. Let's do one with some variables. So let's try square root of 8x cubed minus 2 square root of 18x. Again, these don't match if we're just looking, but we may be able to do more work if we simplify. So neither of these is simplified. We look for the biggest square in each term. So on the first one, I could pull out a 4x squared. The second one, we could pull out a 9, which will go to a 3. The 4x squared goes to a 2x. The 9 goes to a 3, which hits the minus 2, which becomes a minus 6. And then I note square root of 2x in each term. I can use my distributive rule to factor it out. I get a 2 minus 6, which gives me a minus 4 for a minus 4 square root of 2x. We note briefly, if I had an expression like square root of 2 plus square root of 3, there's no common term here, so I can't do any more work. So if you have sums which have many different flavored square roots, you pretty much have to just leave them alone. Okay, so that's going to be another common error is to continue doing work where there is no rules that we can use. So this is as good as this term gets. Let's look at some examples with cube roots. Consider 3 cube root of 128 minus 2 cube root of 16. Here the radicals don't match, but our expressions aren't simplified, so we may be able to do more work. If we look for the biggest cubes under each radical, okay, so in 128 I find 64, in 16 we find an 8, the 64 goes to a 4 for a 12, and then the 8 goes to a 2 for a 4. So we note here we have a common factor of cube root of 2. So we'll pull that out, leaving us with 12 minus 4. 
Okay, two terms go to two terms. We combine, and then we have our answer of 8 cube root of 2. If we try something a little bit trickier, so this is in the vein of what I call the hard problem of the previous video. What we have, 3 cube root of x squared y plus cube root of 27, x to the fifth, y to the seventh. The first term simplified, but the second term isn't because we could pull cubes out of that. So let's take a look. So 27 is a perfect cube. X to the fifth, if we divide by three, that's not going to be an integer, five thirds. But if we go down to the third power, three over three is a one, and that's what I want. So I want to pull an x cubed out of that, but that's going to leave over an x squared. Likewise, with the y of the seven, okay, seven divided by three, not an integer, but six divided by three is. So I'm going to use a y of the six and split off a y of the first. Now we can start pulling terms out. So the 27 comes out as a three, the x cubed as an x, and the y of the six is a y squared. What's left over goes under the cube root. And we note now I can do work because our radicals match. We have two terms. We go to two terms in the parentheses. Nope, we're not going to be able to do any more work with this. That's as is. And I'll just put what's in the parentheses out in front to get our answer. We'll have more to say about multiplication and division rules. Here, division starts with the quotient rule. So this is the analog of the product rule. As you might guess, if I take the square root of a over b, we just take the square roots of each and then divide those. Likewise, for nth roots, okay, the n's have to match. And as with the product rule, this is just an application of rational exponents. So if I rewrite the square root as a over b to the 1 half, well, we distribute okay, using multiple bases, a to the 1 half, b to the 1 half, and divide. And likewise, for nth roots, we're just going to use a 1 over n. Start with a simple example. So let's take the square root of 125 over 5. If we reduce the inside, that goes to a 25. The square root of 25 is 5. On the other hand, if we use the rule to break it up, I'll have square root of 125 over square root of 5. We could pull a 25 as a largest square out of the 125, so that comes out as a 5. 5 squares of 5 over square root of 5. The square root of 5s go away, giving us the 5, which is what we were expecting. Note, we prefer to do the first one, and in fact, that's part of PEMDAS, okay, because you want to do parentheses first. The inside of a square root can be thought of as a parentheses if we go to rational exponent notation. So we should have done this one first, and actually we did. Now, for other examples, let's try cube root. So let's take the cube root 27 over 64. We split it up. I get a cube root 27 over cube root 64, going to 3 over 4. And of course, typically in your work, you're just going to go straight to cube root 27 is a 3, cube root 64 is a 4, which we did back in the first section for radicals. Of course, you can always check your work. And so if we multiply this 3 fourth by itself three times, we get what's under the radical as expected. Let's try some with exponents. So here we're going to use the have rule or split one off and then have. If we have square root of x to the 6 over 16y squared, okay, you can go ahead and break it up. Or you can just go straight to your answer. So the x6, cut the exponent in half, goes to x cubed. 4, 16y squared, that's a perfect square, so that's going to go to 4y. And then that's our answer. Of course, you could check, but we're not going to do that here. Finally, let's do one of these, but with an odd exponent. So note, I take my square root of 5x to the 9 over y to the 10. This is odd. 9 over 2, not going to go to a whole number, 
So we'll split off an x, which will make it go to x to the 8. And then now, what do we do? Well, the x to the 8 goes to x over x to the 4. Okay, we have the exponent. The y of the 10 goes to y of the 5th. And then what's left over just sits inside the radical, which will be in the top of the fraction. And then, of course, we could check by multiplying our answer by itself. If we go the other direction, we could combine our radicals and then we could PEMDAS out the middle to get an easier square root, hopefully. For instance, if we take square root of 24x to the fifth over square root of 2x, okay, we put them together, this is going to reduce to 12x to the four biggest squares. Okay, well, here we'll have a four, x to the four is perfect square, we have its exponent. So we'll get a 2x squared and then a square root of 3. Special case, if I have square root of, say, 54x over 2 times square root of 3, the 2 can cause some confusion. And then there are options, but let's go with the simplest one, which is just a note. I could write this as two fractions and then worry about the 1 half later on. So that's what we'll do. I'll have two fractions, square root over square root, we can combine. When I combine 54x divided by 3, that's going to be an 18x, and now I can work on simplifying the square root of 18x. The large square in there is a 9, which will leave a 2x, and then I can put the 2 back in when we're finished, getting us to our answer here, 3 square root of 2x over 2. Finally, let's try one that brings a lot of things together. So here, we're going to need a lot of exponent rules to go with our quotient rule. So we start off, so cube root of 40, x to the 7, y to the 4, over cube root of 5, x to the minus 1, y. We combine, and then we'll note, well, this looks like what we were doing at the beginning of the semester where we had simplification. We got three parts and we want to bring in our usual exponent rules. So for instance, what can we do? Well, y of the 4 over y is going to be y cubed. We're just taking one y away. The x to the minus 1, I can move that across the bar to lose the sign, which becomes an x. Then that's going to become an x to the 8. And then the 40 over 5 is going to give me an 8, and I should think of that as an 8 over 1, so that way things aren't floating around in my fraction. We've got nothing in the denominator, so we'll just drop it. And now I've got something that I can work with like we were doing before. I want to pull out largest cubes. 8 is a cube, y is a cube, y cubed is a cube, going to y. And then the x to the 8 I have to deal with. 8 over 3 is not a whole number. 7 over 3 isn't, but 6 over 3 is, so I want to use the 6. And that's going to leave me with an x squared. I pull out my cubes, so 8 goes to 2, x to the 6 goes to x squared, y cubed goes to y, and then we're left with an x squared inside of the cube root. So that one, that takes a little bit of practice.